Hey friends, hello, 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 yes, I am on it new, you are not imagining things, will wonders never cease, okay, let's shoot this out, <clears throat> and Oh, I want to say hi to my mama, to my dad, to my sister, to all my family and friends who watch and support. This will be interesting. Um, very interested to see what the noon crowd will be like. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go live. Okay. Some ones salty with Salt Bay. All right. Okay. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I think you just had a birthday. Happy belated. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are getting started at 12.05. It is now 12.01. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we are here at a special time. Uh, hey, 76 Grimke, how you doing, girl? Um, I took a poll this morning asking if you guys wanted uh, a noon show as opposed to the regular time and you know I said voting was over at 11 45 and when it came down to it it was 75 percent who wanted the noon show so here we are today at noon this is not anything permanent this is just for today because I missed last night um hey boo uh last night I I actually not just last night all day yesterday I had a really bad migraine I was literally like laying in the dark when I get migraines I have a lot of light sensitivity um and, you know all I have is led light so I was literally just laying in the dark you know waiting for it to go away I was taking aspirin and all this stuff and um and it just wasn't working you did I'm sorry girl um but yeah I am Back to Toby. Toby's like going crazy upstairs, but um, I am back to normal. Uh, and you know, I want to get uh, you guys information in here, get the show going. And so you guys can go along your merry way, you know? Okay. So we're getting started in two minutes at 12.05. I need you to share this out to your friends. Let them know that you know we're on at a special time. Tonight we have some cool stories. As you can tell in the title, we're going to be talking about Salt Bay. Uh, if you're a Nintendo fan, uh, there is a story for you. Ladies uh, who use, you know, feminine products, um, there's a, a story for you. Um, what is this? And if you heard of Dan Bilzer, it's a, 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 a great variety of stories that we have today. So we're going to have a good time. One more minute before we get started, you know, make sure you've got your, uh, drinky poos, whatever. What do people drink on a Thursday? <laughs> you know, when I'm on here, I only drink water because I need to stay alert. That's what I thought it was, 76 Grimke, the pressure. Like, oh, it was terrible. See, you and me, we here, girl, we here. All right, all right. So uh, let's get ready to get started. And um, I'm looking forward to having a great noon show. Uh, okay. Facebook friends, don't be shy. You know, me and 76 Grimke, we in here holding it down for the migraine crowd. <laughs> All right, let's get started. 
Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to a special noon edition of NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday, uh, usually live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time hearing my face, hearing my voice or seeing my face, particularly because I'm on at a, at a different time, uh, I am Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So making sure that you have, um, you know, your articles of incorporation with the state, making sure that you have um, your EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure that you have contracts for clients and partners, and as well, making sure that, you know, you have brand protection strategies, all of the foundational things that you need to, uh, you know, be a real boss in these streets, I help you do that. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do that, I'm very happy that you asked. Uh, I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful, there are just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. Uh, so that's why I'm here, all right? So if you're in the startup phase of your business and you need some guidance, hit up your girl. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Don't be shy. Book yourself a free 15-minute consult if you're a first-time client. If you're not a first time, you can always book a Talk to Me Tuesday where you get 25 minutes for $25 or book your full one hour sessions as well at Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. You can uh, download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Um, and that's also where you can get the contracts ebook. This month we are focusing on contracts and agreements, you know, to help you solidify your business. I always forget about this lamp. Uh, and the contracts ebook is what we're focusing on this month. So if you want to know how to make your contracts binding and know how to, you know, really make sure that, that they're strong, go pick up the contracts ebook. It's only nine 97. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, we are going to get started very quickly. I'm going to explain to you how the show works. So, uh, I pull stories from the news stories from anywhere stories that you guys send me 76 Grimker right here. She's like an unofficial writer for the show. She'd be finding me stories from everywhere. Um, and we find the ones that have business lessons that we can learn and we talk about them. So this is a time for everybody to get involved, to ask questions, to give comments, as long as they're respectful. You know, I love it when you guys participate. Okay. Um, even if you're watching the replay, don't be shy, you know, put something in the comments. I want to know, I want to know what you think about these stories. Okay. Um, but before we even get into that, we're going to start off with our MPL nugget. Okay. So, uh, as I have, as I just said, we are focusing on contracts this month. Contracts are the lifeblood of your business. Okay. It's how you get deals done. It's how you make sure that people aren't cheating you. It's how, you know, if you have to go to court, it's your proof. Contracts are really important. Um, but you need to make sure that your contract is valid. So this week we, um, we defined what a contract is. We said it's, um, a legally enforceable document, um, you know, between two parties to agree to do or not do something. Uh, we talked about the important components of a valid contract. We talked about offer acceptance and consideration. And today we are going to talk about legal capacity. Now, what am I talking about legal capacity when it comes to contracts? In order to be able to get it to, to, uh, enter into a valid legal argument with anyone, there are certain requirements that you have to fulfill as a person in order to enter into a valid contract with anybody, you must be a legal adult, meaning 18 or older. Now I'm not getting into, you know, a pants emancipated teens or whatever. That ain't my ministry, but for in general, to enter into a into a legal contract, you need to be a legal adult, so 18 or older, all right? As well, you need to be mentally stable, meaning if you are a, a, a diagnosed schizophrenic, 
or, you know, some type of mental ailment, or if you, someone who, who, uh, you know, has down syndrome, they cannot legally enter into an agreement because they have mental limit. There, there are mental limitations, right? Um, as well as mental capacity, that means you also cannot be dependent on any chemical. So if you are a drug addict or if you are a notorious drunk, you can't, uh, especially if you are, you know, on drugs or drunk at the time that you're supposed to sign the contract, you cannot enter into a valid contract, right? Um, and the and the third the third requirement is that you have to be entering into the contract of your own free will. So if someone is threatening you or threatening your family, either physically or verbally, however, you know, or they're holding something hostage, that is not, you know, until you sign this contract, that is not of your own free will, okay? So in order for a person to be able to legally enter an agreement, enter into an agreement, they must be a legal adult, meaning 18 or over, they must be mentally stable, meaning of sound mind and not, you know, um, abusing any substances and they must be signing of their own free will. Okay. All right. So that is our NPL nugget. Now, uh, before we move on to, into our stories, I have to send a quick text because I have a client that's supposed to call me at 1230 and I want to let them know that we're going to be on to, at 1245. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that, Instagram. I'm back, okay? All right. So let's start off, okay? Um, now, if you... Uh, does anybody know Salt Bay's real name? 76 Grimke, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit since, you know, it's me and you holding it down today. Um, but do you know the real name of the guy who we call Salt Bay? That guy, he wears the white t-shirt and the black jeans and the sunglasses and he's got the mustache and he, you know, sprinkles the salt. Do you know his real name, his given name? 76 Grimke. Um... For those of you out there who probably don't know, because I didn't know until yesterday, um, Salt Bay's real name is Nusrat Goche. Um, I, I looked up the, 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 I Googled the pronunciation to make sure that I got it right. Oh. <laughs> Nusrat Goche, 76 Grimke, Nusrat Goche. But um, that's that, but you got the spelling almost right. But when I looked up the pronunciation, it's Nusrat Goche. Okay. And uh, if you don't know how uh, Salt Bay got his start, uh, Salt Bay is a Turkish butcher. And I don't know, his little, you know, flourish with the salt, it got him some fame. You saw people doing Salt Bay all over the place. So much so that Salt Bay has opened several restaurants. Now, they have been called some of the worst restaurants in NYC, but, you know, Salt Bay has a gimmick going, you know, and that doesn't stop people from going to his restaurants, right? Um, but Salt Bay is out here leaving salty tastes in people's mouth that, you know, aren't necessarily appetizing. Um, Salt Bay or Nusrat Goche is being sued. <laughs> yes, girl, is being sued by a gentleman by the name of William Hicks. William Hicks is suing uh, Salt Bay for $5 million. Why? Um, in 2017, Salt Bay commissioned Mr. Hicks and another artist to make a mural for, um, a couple of his restaurants, right? So they did the murals. Um, they put them up beautiful. Um, that was the job. Uh, William Hicks then, uh, and, and William Hicks did get paid for that mural, right? William Hicks is now suing Salt Bay for $5 million because, Salt Bay continued to print, took that mural and printed it on menus, takeout bags, and signs um, at various locations uh, for his restaurants, including Turkey, Greece, and the United Arab Emirates. So William Hicks is basically suing Salt Bay for copyright infringement because he said, you hired me to do this mural for your restaurant. I never gave you permission to then take said mural and reprint it for menus and takeout bags and things like that. Um, so now they are, they're going to go to court over this. So I want to know from you, because Salt Bay hired William Hicks for the mural, do you think that um, Salt Bay, that that gave him 
the right to then take that mural and use it for other promotional items? Or is William Hicks, is he right in suing Salt Bay for copyright infringement? For, for wrongful, you know, reproduction of his work. What do you think about that? 76 Grim Gay is already, she already got her opinion. She said Salt Bay needs to be sued. Now, I don't know what's going on with Salt Bay, but this is not his only issue. Apparently, he's recently also had wage complaints from, from employees saying that he did not pay them overtime. And he also has um, a, um, an almost million dollar construction uh, bill against him that he has not yet paid. So... Um, I don't know what Salt Bay is doing with all this money that he's getting, but he's not paying people. And, uh, apparently he's now committing copyright infringement. 76 Grim Gay said that she is team Hicks. Now, um, why, why do you, why do you think that, why are you team Hicks? Right? Cause when, um, what would we need to, what would we need to know between Salt Bay and Mr. Hicks to know who has the right to reproduce this, um, this, mural or this this image right when salt bay uh, 76 grim gray sounds like our former clown <laughs> right when salt bay hired mr hicks and this other person for the mural what was in the contract did they have a section in there for intellectual property did they have a section in there that that talked about reproducing this image this is why it's important for you guys to have written contracts and to understand all of the terms. Because if there's a written contract with the clauses, then you can just go through it. But when you just have, you know, handshake agreements or, you know, going back and forth in emails, sometimes it can get difficult. So hopefully these guys had, you know, a fully executed contract that they can um, look to to see who um, is in the right here. But 70 says Green Bay, she is on Mr. Hicks' side. She said Salt Bay pay up. All right. Okay. Um, moving on to our second story of the afternoon. Uh, it's so different being on in the afternoon. It's like I'm used to seeing like this being dark and it's all bright. <laughs> moving on to our second story of the afternoon. Um, we all know Nintendo, right? And and we all know that uh, we live in a fan fiction um, type of society where, you know, people, th they'll, they'll see their favorite characters and they'll, you know, write stories or make, you know, cool backgrounds and things like that for their favorite characters, right? Um, and some people take it a little further. There is a company out here um, called Akko Arcade, right? Um, and they are a... An, a not safe for work 3D modeling company. So basically they take, um, they make 3D models of your favorite, you know, characters and they make them dirty, <clears throat> right? Um, to the point that they made one, um, they made a 3D model of Bowser with a, um, with, with, a, with his genitalia, right? A penis. Uh, and Nintendo, hi, one true empress, Nintendo got whiff of this, uh, Bowser penis, uh, model that Akko Arcade put out and they sued, uh, Akko Arcade. Well, not, not that they sued them, but they got the image taken down. Akko Arcade went to their website one day and they got, you know, a notice from their hosting company that, Hey, we got a copyright claim against y'all. We had to take this down. One true empress said inappropriate. And that's exactly why Nintendo did that. Nintendo is known as a family friendly company. They don't want to be seen as condoning or involved in anything that seems to be like, you know, adult activity, particularly if you're painting on or, you know, or digitally attaching genitalia to characters that generally don't even have genitalia, right? So um, Nintendo is using using their copyright powers to make sure that, you know, the, the, the parodies and the fan fiction that comes out is to their standards. So do you think that Nintendo is doing too much or, you know, are they within their rights, right? Because Echo Arcade, they never said that they were working with Nintendo. They just put the pictures out there. Now, um, Echo Arcade, they basically said, we're not going to stop all, um, doing what we're doing. What we won't do is be put, is be putting names on the characters. So they might make another Bowser, but they won't be calling it Bowser. I don't know how that's going to fly, but we'll see. One True Empress said rights, rights. 
So, you, oh, you think Nintendo is well within their rights? Okay, I, I think so too. Nintendo has an image to uphold, so they really don't, like, they've really got to be kind of, you know, on their P's and Q's. It's just like, um, that man who just got, uh, who lost his job, Paul Pierce, like, you dummy. Um, you know, he works for NBC, which works for Disney, and Paul Pierce was out here, you know, doing the most. And uh, they said, this is not the image that we want to portray for, you know, an employee of ultimately Disney and Paul Pierce lost his job. So uh, Nintendo, you know, they're, they're here trying to protect their image. 76 Greenface said she is team N. All right. Okay. Um, before we move on to our next stories, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my usually Monday through Wednesday live broadcast. We usually broadcast Monday through Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am on today at Thursday at noon because I missed last night's show due to, you know, a migraine that was, you know, just kicking my butt. Um, but I wanted to get this episode in for y'all and you, you all voted and said you wanted a noon show. So here we are, right? Okay. But uh, yes, thank you for watching NPL Legal Dish. I am your business formation boss. If you are in the startup phase of your business, hit up your girl. Let's talk. Let's get you on the route to successful business ownership. Let's get your articles of incorporation. Let's get those contracts together. Let's get that brand protection strategy together, okay? Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and book your free 15-minute consultation today, all right? Hmm? Oh, how do I feel now? I feel much better. So much better. Like yesterday, I, I couldn't even have any lights on yesterday. All the lights were off. I was just laying here in the dark. Like, uh, but you know, now I got the light in my face. I'm good. Okay. All right. Thank you for asking my dear. Um, moving on to our next story. Ladies. Hey, ladies. Loud now. Help me out. Come on. All the ladies. <laughs> okay. That's a, a little tangent. Um, ladies, ladies, ladies. Have you ever heard of the product? Now, it, I didn't say use. Have you ever heard of the product Vagisil? V-A-G-I-S-I-L. Gentlemen, you may have heard it as well. Um, Vagisil is a feminine wash, uh, you know, just for the ladies. Uh, it's been out for a while. And do you have you heard of Vagisil? If you have, give me a V in the comments. V for Vagisil. 76 Grim Grey said yes. Okay. Have you heard of Vagisan? If you have heard of Vagisan, V-A-G-I-S-A-N, S-A-N, give me a Z. Just to be funny. If you have heard of Vagisan, Vagisan, give me a Z. Okay. And I think we talked about this story a while ago. Um, all right. Now, uh, Vagisil, you, you never heard of it? Neither have I. So, uh, Vagisil recently filed a lawsuit against a German, uh, feminine wash company that was trying to trademark their feminine wash Vagisil. Um, and Vagisil, they went to the court and they said, look here, court, we've been out here in the coochie cleaning game for a while. We are, you know, people associate our product with, you know, feminine care. And to have another product out here in the market that is so close to our name would cause a lot of confusion, right? So one, I'm going to ask you guys a question. If you were in the, in the store where you would find these products and you saw Vagisil and Vagisan on the same, uh, you know, shelf, would you think they were related? And two, do you think that Vagisil was correct in this argument that there is a, uh, you know, a probability of confusion. So if you were in, you know, Target and you went in, in the feminine products aisle and you saw Vagisil versus Vagisan, would you think they were related or connected to each other? Just give me a yes or a no and, and uh, put number one. And then the next question, number two, do you think Vagisil is doing the right thing or were they doing too much? Let me know what you think. Then while you do that, um, just, just to fast forward to the end, the judge ultimately ended up siding with Vagisil. The judge was like, yes, y'all are out here, you know, supporting the ladies, you know, keeping that thing fresh <laughs> and, and you've solidified your, your place 
in the, uh, you know, in that arena. So we are not going to allow this German company to try, you know, swoop in and, uh, and, you know, take some of that market share away. One true emperor said, knock off brand too much. Um, 76 Grim Grey said, if the packaging is the same, yes. All right. Well, the judge, you know, they were on Vagisil's side and they said, Vagisil, you're going to have to come back with something better. So, uh, you know, congrats to Vagisil, you know? Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on to our next story. All right, this case, I feel like this is a case of somebody doing too much, but I understand. So uh, there is a brewery called Low Tide Brewery, right? And they have their name, trademarked Low Tide Brewery, all that. Um, In the same town as Low Tide Brewery, there is another brewery that just opened up and they're calling themselves Tideland, right? Um, and Low Tide Brewery, they're like, look, we have, Tide is our birthright. We done went through this trademark process and we've got tide, tide in our name. So we oppose this Tideland Brewery. So they went to the court and they asked the judge to give them a preliminary injunction, meaning please tell Tideland to stop using this name until we can figure out who, who does Tide belong to, right? Um, so Low Tide Brewery, they went to the judge. They said, can you please tell Tideland to stop using the name until we get this lawsuit over with? What do you think the judge said? Do you think the judge agreed with Low Tide Brewery? Or did the judge say, Low Tide, hold your horses? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Low Tide Brewery brewery versus Tideland. Do you think the judge was like, you know what? This is absolutely, you know, an emergency. We need to stop it immediately. Or was the judge like, you know, let's just see how this plays out till we get this resolved. Um, I'm assuming that some of y'all are driving, but uh, just to, to, to give you the scoop on it, um, the judge um, said no to the preliminary injunction. Um, 76 Green Bay, no, the judge said no to the preliminary injunction. The judge said, look, you know, um, if it was called high tide, but no relation. Okay. Yeah. The judge was like, look, I'm not saying that there's no possibility that this case has some merit, but I am not convinced of that enough that I'm going to tell these people to stop using this name altogether until we resolve this case. So low tide brewery, and Tideland are, you know, they're they're going to be able to keep their names, but they are going to be battling out in the court for the trademark. So, who do you think is going to win? Do you think Low t or should win? Do you think Low Tide Brewery should win? If you think Low Tide should win, give me Low Tide. If you think Tideland should be able to continue to the, the, use the name Tideland, put Tideland. So, who do you think should win here? Low Tide or Tideland? Let me know. Let me know, no. Let me know. <laughs> One True Empress is on Tideland side, okay? One True Empress is on Tideland side. You're saying there's, there's room for more than one tide in this town. Who's that? I can't see who that is in the picture. Say hi. Um... And so he says, Grim Gay, any, okay. So the both of you are on Tideland side. Okay. So I guess we'll have, I, I think I'm on Tideland side too. Again, I said, I think this is a case of somebody doing too much, but I get it. I do think low tide is doing a little bit too much, but I understand, especially, um, I'm not sure how close these breweries are to each other, but yeah, you're doing a little much, but I, I don't think it's like way outside of the box. Okay. All right. Moving on to our last story of the evening. Um, has, have any of you heard of Dan Bilzerian? Dan Bilzerian. He is, um, a, a famous Instagram influencer. I've seen him in some people's videos. Like I've seen him in a Chris Brown video. Uh, I've seen him, I think I've seen him on Cardi B's Instagram. 
Um, Dan Bilzerian. If you have heard of Dan Bilzerian, give me a D in the comments. Okay, none of you guys have heard of him. That's cool. Anyway, Dan Bilzerian, he has a beverage line, right? Um, and of course, with any brand that you that you are trying to release, particularly a product, you need uh, you need marketing materials, photos, right? So um, there is an agency called Creative Click Agency. They are suing Dan Bilzerian for copyright infringement. Um, so apparently Dan, you know, he'd been reaching out to different agencies and he was like, hey, I need some photos done. And he contacted Creative Click and was like, hey, let's do a sample photo shoot, see how things go. Sample photo shoot done. Dan and his people say, you know what? We don't think this is going to work out. So we don't think we'll be moving forward with this photography contract. Um, cool. So Creative Click, they go, you know, they're like, fine, whatever. But then Dan and his people turn around and take these sample photos and use them in promotional materials for his beverage line. So now Creative Click Agency is suing Dan Bilzerian um, for copyright infringement. Do you think Dan Bilzerian is in the right or is he in the wrong, right? He hired them to do a sample photo shoot, right? He didn't hire them for the, for the, for the full campaign, but who has the rights to those sample photos? Can y'all tell me? Who gets the rights to these sample photos? Hi, Russo KD. Um, One True Empress said, another way of trying to get over. Show them the money. One True Empress is on Creative Click Agency's side. I'm on their side too. Dan Bilzerian, he's a multimillionaire. You know how this stuff works. I don't understand why these people try and get over on these little agencies. They, If you didn't hire them, fine. But you can't just take the, the pictures and use them. 76 Grimke said scammer. That's right. That is a scam. So I want Creative Click Agency to get every dollar they can out this man. You be up in all the videos, all the clubs, run these people their coin, okay? All right. So those were the stories that I had for you today. I want to thank you guys for tuning into this special noon edition of NPL Legal Dish. This is not going to be a new time. This is just for today. We will be back on Monday at our usual time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you are not on my email list yet, make sure that you download the BizLaunch cheat sheet so that you can get on there. Uh oh yeah it was fun it was fun um but yeah if you guys have any questions now's the time to ask we had stories about salt bay we talked about the nintendo porn <laughs> we talked about vagisil we talked about low tide brewery and dan bilzerin so we talk about everything on this show everything <laughs> But if you have any questions on those, now's your time to ask. Uh, if you missed the NPL nugget, make sure that you go back and uh, watch the beginning of the show. We're talking about contracts this month, and today we talked about legal capacity. All right. So uh, if this is if that's it for you guys, we are going to close out. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you Monday. Bye.